So today's topic is recursion, and recursion is when a function calls itself. When the function that's called one thing actually calls itself again, but with a different parameter so that it breaks down a problem smaller. So let's just put some terms here so that it makes sense to you, and then we'll do some examples. So let's put this in our file here so you'll have it. It's simply when a function calls itself instead of another function. It works by reducing the problem into smaller and smaller pieces by calling itself over and over, making the problem smaller each time until you get to a piece that you already know the answer to. And whenever I'm teaching this, I always give the same example of imagine you're in a large lecture hall and you're supposed to fill out a form and the form tells you, asks you what row you're on. How can you find that out without getting up from your seat and counting all the rows? You just ask the person directly in front of you what row they're on, and then you add one to that to get what row you're on. Well, how does that person know what row they're on? They ask the person in front of them, and so on and so on and so on, over and over and over again until you get to the person who knows what row they're on, row number one. So there are three requirements for recursion to work. First requirement, the function must include a call to itself. Number two, the function must have a base case, which is just a way to stop. So you can do everything you can do with looping. I don't know why it keeps beeping at me. The function must approach the base case each time, which means each call it has to get closer to the base case. So here's an example where it'll work. Instead of looping, we're going to use recursion, recursion to print down the numbers from my starting point to zero, then say blast off. From 10 to zero, then say blast off. So we're going to do a countdown here. So I'm going to call my function countdown, and I'm going to put the starting number here. So I'm going to start with that number, and if that num is equal to zero, then I'm going to print blast off. Now it's not going to print zero. It's going to the last number. It's going to print three, two. 1, then blast off. So, if it's not 0, now I don't want to use a loop. Oops, I made a typo up here. Put recursion. I don't want to put a loop. Instead of a loop, I'm going to keep starting over again. It's just a different way to do repetition. You keep starting over again. So, it's not 0, so I don't print blast off. Instead, I print the number num, and then I start all over again. I'm going to start all over again, but this time for my starting parameter, I'm going to put num minus 1. That way I'm closer to my base case. So when I call this, I put the starting number, count down 10, and the first time I call it, I'm going to, it's not going to be 0, so I'm going to print the 10, then I'm going to start all over again, with 9 this time. 
So let me run this. So you can see recursion p1 how it works. So each time it started again and when it got to the very last one it didn't start all over again. It was done. It didn't start all over again. It just printed blast off and stopped. Let's do another example. They start off easy but make sure you really got it because they get um, a little bit more confusing. So let's just do another one that just prints some stuff out. Then later we'll do some computations. This one called print evens. Print evens. Ugh. Takes a number and prints all the even numbers in reverse order prints all the even numbers in reverse order. So, let's write the comment of what we're trying to do. Print all the even numbers from num down to zero, which is even. All right, down to zero. All the even numbers from So the first thing you need to ask is, what if the first one's not even? assume the parameter is even for this example. All right, so the parameter is even, so if it's an even number we want to print it out, right? And then we want to call it again to do the next one. And then we want to call it again to do the next one. What is our base case? Almost always we start with the base case for our if statement. If we're at the base case, if the num is equal to zero, that's our base case, then we're going to do num, then we print it out, and that's all. We don't start all over again. That's our base case. We don't start all over again. We're done. However, if it's not that, we're going to print it out. But then we're going to start all over again. We're going to call print evens again. Now we don't want to print that number again. We want to print that number minus 2. That way we get the number that's 2 less. Start all over again. Is this going to approach the base case? Sure it is as long as I make sure it starts with an even number. So let's do print evens. Mm, 50 run this and we got all the even numbers. Notice that all our examples are going backwards. That's because recursion is usually used when you want to break the problem down into smaller and smaller pieces. Not usually for adding things up but for breaking a problem down to something you know the solution to. Keep that in mind and then you'll see why these examples work. So those examples were using recursion to print out things that needed to be printed out, but many times recursion is used to compute a result. But the principle is the same. You're still trying to break the problem down. So for this example, let's talk about something that has a recursive definition, factorial. Let's say I wanted to compute 5 factorial. So 5 factorial, by definition, is actually a 5 times 4 factorial, right? Right, and 4 factorial is 4 times 3 factorial. And 3 factorial is 3 times 2 factorial, all the way down to where you get to 1 factorial or 0 factorial, both of which you know the answer to. So let's see how we could write that using recursion factorial of a number. Okay, so by definition we know it's going to be the number times one less factorial. So, all right, let's think of our base case. Let's do one for our base case the first time. If num equals one, we know the answer, so we can go on and return one. But what if it isn't one? 
What if it's any other number? Any other number, it's going to be no, return num times the factorial of num minus 1. Is this approaching the base case? Does it meet all of our rules? Students usually struggle with this example because they think as soon as I see this return here, it's done. So let's do 5 factorial. Let's look at this very carefully and make sure you understand why it works. If I say print out factorial of 5, the first thing it's going to do is check to see if the num is 1 and it's not, it's 5. So it doesn't do this, instead it returns this. All right, so you're thinking, okay, well then it's done. What makes it keep going? It keeps going because it can't do anything till it finishes this line. So five times, whoops, start all over again. And then when it gets to the start all over again and it's four, it's four times, whoops, start all over again. And it saves where it was at each of those times. So I'm going to stop here for now, and on my next video I'm going to show on paper what's actually happening in memory when these examples are run.